I'm Jennifer Lindsay, and um, I'm the curator of the Urban Bungalow Show, which will be opening on October 30th at the Joan Hiseoka Healing Arts Gallery, and it will be shown through December 20th. So one of the things that's really exciting about showing the uh, work in the Urban Bungalow Show is that it is designed for daily use. These are objects that are meant to be handled and used and enjoyed in, in your daily life. Um, they are an opportunity, whether it's to have your coffee in a cup that feels just beautiful and perfect in your hand, to uh, riding to work on a, a custom created skateboard, or um, having an heirloom piece of furniture in your environment that you know you're gonna pass on for generations. So there are 14 local artists and uh, they are from DC, Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. They are working in a wide range of media from glass to ceramics, textiles, wood, and metals. Um, they are all extraordinary individuals and one of the things that was important to me about this show was the opportunity to show the work of local artists um, who are basically our neighbors. Um, the Joan Hiseoka Gallery is a real community focused gallery. That's one of the things that is inspiring about the show and uh, I really wanted to use the show as an opportunity to introduce these 14 exceptional artists and their work. My name is Vico von Voss. Okay, I'm a, I'm a woodworker and I brought in three pieces. One is called the Yin Yang table, the second is uh, the Vico von Voss chair, and the third is a stool. Um, all the materials that I use uh, are salvaged. And when I mean salvage, that means I, basically people call me and they have a tree that's either fallen over by a storm or been taken down by a tree company. And I take that wood and mill it and then I transform it into my pieces of furniture. It, because these, are, these trees are salvaged, a lot of times these pieces of wood have defects in them. And it's actually the defects that are the inspiration for the details. And they actually, a lot of times, are what guide the piece. For instance, in the yin yan table, um, there was a big rotten area in, in where, where the inlay is done. And what I ended up doing was cut the rotten portion out, made some templates for the yin, the yin and the yan. And the idea was I've always wanted to do a three-dimensional interpretation of the yin and the yan. Um, and so I decided to use the concave and the convex the light wood versus the dark wood. So it's playing off of those two juxtapositions. What I want people to do when they are interacting with my furniture, I want them to come and be in the present moment. And there's one clear indication, and I always get a smile on my face when I know I've succeeded. And that is when I see people on their hands and knees looking at my furniture. That tells me that right then and there, they have moved themselves out of their normal fast pace trajectory and they're looking at something in a completely different angle and then I know I've succeeded and I've drawn them in. Uh, my name is Caleb Woodard. I am a custom furniture maker. I have two pieces in this show. Maelstrom out of black walnut. It's a chest of drawers and uh, also Lissom coffee table out of ash. The, the Maelstrom cabinet that I've that I have in here now is is kind of the latest in, in the evolution of, the, of of carved cabinetry that I've been doing lately, where I've tried to explore beyond flat planes, contemporary lines, and and I've really really tried to uh, evolve the carving technique, and this is just the latest iteration of that. I, I find a lot of uh, inspiration in, in organic forms, which I try to translate into materials. I've I've always kind of rebelled a little bit against square lines, and uh, I've, I've tried to always uh, incorporate a great deal of craftsmanship into the pieces, and, and in a very highly sculptured form. 
My name is Joseph Corcoran. Uh, I'm a resident artist at DC Glassworks, uh, mostly glass, some metal, mixed media installation work, um, mainly sculpture. Uh, language is glass, blown glass, mirrored. And uh, the reason why I named it language is because it evokes a certain script-like quality to it. And then my other piece is uh, falling apart. And it is really kind of uses the same gestural um, forms, but in a much different way to evoke nature and to evoke kind of this randomness, but a togetherness as well. Glass is a beautiful medium because you can capture a moment. You can capture something that is kind of midstream and, and, it, and it's capturing that energy at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling these forms out and then solidifying this, this form for you know, the next hundred years. So that's really, these, these pieces almost makes themselves. They curl, they bend, and that's because of the heat, that's because of the tension they're under, and then, you know, I let them do what they do. Laurel Lukashevsky, and I am a sculptor. I work mostly with ceramics, um, clay, and um, the work that I have the two installation pieces I have are Envious, and the second one is Tangled. It's interesting. I usually start making, I have an idea for a component, like a single piece. I, I Like if I'm in the studio, I'll, I hate to say play around, but I'll be playing around with clay or a die that has a new shape, and I'll extrude something and think, oh, that looks pretty cool. Um, but what happens is that for most of my pieces, I need to amass a, a mass of them. Um, and so I need, I need to have a number of components before I can actually make something. And so what I'll usually do is sort of like making bricks. You end up, you need a whole bunch of bricks before you can build a wall or a building. And so I'll make all of these components. Once I've made them, then I will see how I can assemble them and so far I've been able to assemble every component that I've made so I've been pretty lucky um, I think I do have a couple of boxes of pieces that just didn't work but one of the challenges is that you know you're dealing with gravity and space and sometimes pieces just don't want to stay up and so discovering which pieces work and which pieces don't that's really where I start to develop the sort of the work that I have now is through a lot of trial and error, many years of trial and error. My name is Art Droglas. I'm a woodworker and furniture maker. Uh, the, uh, the piece, the main piece I have is uh, called the Pup of Monster Cabinet. I also have a few shelves downstairs as well. Uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I decided I needed I needed to build a bookcase. I built a lot of cabinets and tables, but not a bookcase. And the idea came to me of, uh, I just started sketching around, and I ended up drawing a couple of horns on a bookcase. And I thought, well, it's a little odd. And it, the, it morphed from that, from this bookcase with horns, into a cabinet shaped a bit like a tiki god or something like that, and I called it the Monster Cabinet. It had a, this shelf that was like a nasty underbite, and there were bits of antlers and bolts and stuff like that, and it was just kind of fun. It was a place to let my imagination run wild, and it did. Uh, and then somebody, the person who bought the dog, said, well, maybe you should do a pup. <laughs> I said, so I did the pup. Uh, and that's what we've got downstairs. It's, you know, it's sort of floppy-eared, wagging tail, um, the back is stitched together with wire. Uh, naturally, you know, you can see, if you open him up, you can, you can get inside and look at his plumbing, and his mouth falls open. I think every tooth in his mouth is, and there's like one tooth missing, of course, has a, is a different wood. Um, yeah, and, and there's, I mean, I've long planned others in the series, but I just don't 
sometimes it's hard to fit in uh, when I'm going to build them or what I'm gonna, exactly what I'm going to do with them. I think the next one is going to be something is uh, might be Son of Monster Cabinet. It could be Bride of Monster Cabinet. Uh, it could be I've got this great pecky walnuts. It looks kind of like a chocolate chocolate chip cookie. So there could be a chocolate chip cookie monster cabinet next. But uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun series and makes people smile. It's been an extraordinary experience to work with Brooke Seidelman, the gallery director, and the gallery staff here, as well as these incredible local artists. They are all working really at the margins, you know, at the edge of their mediums. They're pushing their techniques into really um, dynamic and interesting territory. And um, so I hope that while the art is approachable for anyone without an art historical background, that it's, it's also very, the fact that it's interesting from an art historical perspective also comes across to viewers who might be interested in that.